Hey there, music lovers. Welcome to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch these videos. In this video, I'm going to give my review of the new album from Ann Wilson. It's called Immortal. And it came out last week, November the 14th. Of course, you know Ann Wilson. She is one half of the band Heart, which is currently on hiatus, I guess is the best way to put it. It's like a hiatus hernia, I guess you can say. I'm going to get to that in just a bit. But this album is an album of covers. Ann Wilson wanted to pay tribute to some artists who passed away recently. And that's pretty depressing when you look at this list. I mean, it's like, wow, I can't believe that everybody here is gone. You know, we're talking about David Bowie, Tom Petty, Chris Cornell, you know, Jerry Rafferty, Jack Bruce. It's just a depressing list. And I'm going to go through this album track by track and let you know what I think about it. Uh, but as I mentioned, yeah, Ann Wilson uh, currently taking a bit of a break from heart, uh, a little bit of a wedge between her and her sister Nancy, which is not like them. You know, uh, anytime I've seen the Wilson sisters, they have always been a team. You know, they've been like an inseparable pair. Then uh, they've been through a lot of shit. You know, I mean, back in the 70s, you know, there was no guy that could come between them. You know, remember the Fisher brothers and everything, you know, get to the 80s when MTV came in and all they wanted to do was focus on Nancy's boobs. And they wanted to shoot Anne from like the neck up because she was, you know, overweight or something, you know. And then you get to the 90s when nobody cared about heart. You know, they were putting out albums. Nobody was buying them. Um, they got through all that stuff. Uh, lately, things have been getting a little bit strained as they've gotten older. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, are we going to make a new album or we're just going to go tour on our catalog? Um, you know, I think Anne likes to put new stuff out. She likes to create music, whereas Nancy is happy going out playing the old stuff. And so what wound up getting in the way of the sisters were husbands and children. That's where we see the loyalty shift here uh, in an unfortunate way. What happened was in the summer of 2016, August of 2016, Hart was on tour. They were doing a homecoming show in Seattle. They're on stage getting ready to do Stairway to Heaven. Backstage, uh, Nancy's two kids, or two sons, wanted to go check out the tour bus. They wanted to go and see what it was like on the inside. So Anne's husband let them on, and he was like, look, don't leave the door open, otherwise you're going to let the dogs out. So, you know, kids will be kids, right? So one of them leaves the door open. I think a dog gets out. Uh, Anne's husband goes ballistic. He winds up punching one of the kids in the back of the head. The other kid comes to his brother's rescue, and Anne's husband winds up practically strangling him to the point where the kid couldn't even breathe. Uh, it got really, really ugly. The cops were called. Anne's husband was charged. Of course, Nancy is just, you know, <laughs> beside herself that this is going on. She she doesn't like Anne's husband, always thought he was a crackpot. Uh, Anne is standing up for her husband, like taking his side. So her loyalty wasn't with her sister, it was with her husband. And you can say that's right or wrong, uh, that's for her to decide. But let's face it, Anne's husband is a grade A dick. The guy's an asshole. You know, you, you don't put your hands on someone else's kids. Um, you know, unless they're coming after you with a knife or your life is in danger, you don't go strangling kids and punching them in the back of the head, especially family. It's like, what kind of an asshole do you have to be, you know? So it's real unfortunate that this whole thing is kind of blown up to where it is. Uh, a big strain on the sisters. Hart has been inactive for the past couple of years. Uh, I'm glad I got to see them when I did. I actually saw them a month after this happened uh, in, in September of 2016. And uh, it was a really cool tour. They were playing with Cheap Trick and Joan Jett. It was a fun tour, and it was a great show. I just remember, uh, one of the things that I remember, in addition to them just performing really well and sounding really good, they did Stairway to Heaven, and they seemed to me like the only band that should do Stairway to Heaven. I mean, who else is going to cover Stairway and do it justice? Hart does. You know, Anne just sings it beautifully. And um, I give them a license to do Stairway all right, because they did a really good job with it. But you would have never known. Like, I had no idea that all this shit was going on. It kind of came out later. Um, 
So from what I understand in a recent interview, Anne mentioned that her and her sister were going to start talking next year about what they want to do. Uh, definitely some ice has to thaw. They have to come to terms with what hard is going to be. Uh, Anne wants to make some brand new music, wants to, you know, doesn't want to go for the money grab type of thing. So there's lots of talking that has to happen there and uh, a lot of feelings got to get sorted out. So I think the sisters will be back at some point. Um, but uh, for right now, Anne is going to promote her new solo album, which I mentioned is an album of covers. She just uh, did a tour with Jeff Beck and Paul Rogers. So she's been kind of, you know, trying to do her, her own thing to kind of keep herself busy. All right, so one interesting thing about this album is it was produced by a guy named Mike Flicker, who uh, actually discovered Hart back in the 70s. He produced their first few albums. So this is a bit of a reunion of sorts of uh, Anne with Mike for this album. It's got 10 songs on it, a couple of guests. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of them plays on the very first song, Warren Haynes of the Allman Brothers and Government Mule. Uh, the first song is called You Don't Own Me, which was uh, a Leslie Gore song. Uh, she's the one that did that uh, hit, It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To from the mid-60s. And uh, this was another hit. And um, I really don't like the treatment that Anne gives this. She gives it a very hard, bluesy kind of a feel. And I don't, I don't think it works. I really don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, I heard a really good cover of this recently. And I mentioned it in a video. I'm going to put a link up to it. you got to check out Band Geek. Uh, I, I did a whole video about those guys. I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, I heard them do a cover of Close to the Edge by Yes. That absolutely blew me away. And then I kept looking at some other things that they did. Uh, and one of them was You Don't Own Me. Uh, and the singer on that one, Anne Marie, she owned that song. Blew it out of the water. And she did a much better job than what we're hearing here. Uh, I'm, I'll put a link to it down below. So you can check that out for yourself and uh, curious to see what you think about it. Number two on this album is a song called I Am The Highway, which was a song that uh, Chris Cornell did with Audio Slave. You may remember that uh, Audio Slave is a band that uh, consisted of um, basically Rage Against the Machine uh, with Chris Cornell singing. And uh, I always thought they were a pretty cool band, and uh, this was a good song as well. And Anne does a really good job with it. She tends to do a good job with the slower songs, with like more of the ballad kind of songs. She, it seems to fit her well, and she gets into the, into the nuances and, and really gives the songs uh, a new life. And um, I think that she did a really good job on I Am The Highway. All right, next up is a track called Luna by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. This is a very old Petty song. It came out like before Damn the Torpedoes. Uh, I never really cared for this song, but Ann Wilson does a really good job with it. I think she's able to rescue uh, some of the nice things about the song, some of the, some of the melodies and everything. And she makes a really nice arrangement here so I definitely would recommend that one. All right the fourth song on this album is I'm Afraid of Americans by David Bowie and uh, I'm afraid I don't like this cover it uh, just doesn't have the same angst that the David Bowie version has you know the one that Bowie did he was going through his nine inch nails phase you know so it's very you know had this had this industrial sound to it and it's very edgy you kind of feel like someone is walking behind you. You know, that's, that's how scary it sounds, but it's all lost here. Uh, Ann Wilson does this Middle Eastern kind of thing with it that I just don't get, and uh, I just, no. Nah. All right, so next up is Politician by Cream. And what a shame that we lost Jack Bruce, you know. He was the bass player, the lead singer of this band. And uh, I'm glad that they all got together and did one final tour with Eric Clapton. Uh, it was a great way to end things. And, uh, I, you know, Politician is one of my favorite Cream songs. I'm not digging the version that Ann Wilson does here, though. I think that it's a bit heavy-handed, kind of loses the subtleties of the original. And plus, I think this is a song that really needs to be sung by a guy. I mean, it's a, a guy song. He even says in the lyrics, you know, I'm a political man. I mean, that's just the way it is. It just doesn't really do anything for me. All right, so the next song is one by Leonard Cohen called A Thousand Kisses Deep. 
And uh, I went back and listened to the original because I wasn't familiar with it. And as with any Leonard Cohen song, I'm just not digging it. I'm really not a fan of his, not crazy about the way that he delivers his vocals and all that. But Ann Wilson does a really good version of this song. She kind of keeps the low-key vibe, but she makes it more jazzy. Uh, and there's some nice strings in there by Ben Mink. Now, if you're a fan of Rush... You've probably heard that name before. Ben is the one that put the strings on the song Losing It from the Signals album. He also showed up on their final tour. He played the strings on Losing It live, and uh, you can catch it on their uh, R40 DVD. All right, so the seventh song on this album is Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles, and it's the only one on this album that features the lead vocal of uh, someone who's not deceased. Of course, she was going after this song because it features Glenn Fry. Uh, but this one is sung, of course, by uh, Don Henley. And I think this is just an Eagles song that doesn't need to be touched. It's kind of like a Hotel California. It's just, it's very much an Eagles song. Just leave it alone. Anybody who tries to cover it is going to come up short. And um, that she does on this one. She gives it a very Peter Gabriel-esque kind of a vibe. It almost sounds like Digging in the Dirt. It sounds like she took an alternate take of Digging in the Dirt and dropped Life in the Fast Lane on it or something. And it's just, I'm not feeling it. All right, so up next is a song called Back to Black, which was by Amy Winehouse. And a real shame that we lost Amy. You know, she was such a talent. She had a lot of promise. And uh, this song, Back to Black, has just got a lot of charm to it, a lot of nuances. Uh, it's just got a lot of character. And that's all lost here with Anne's version. She has a very sparse arrangement that just loses everything that... I like about the uh, original, to be honest with you. All right, so the ninth song on this album is A Different Corner by George Michael. And if you're familiar with the original, you know, it's just got a very delicate uh, kind of an arrangement, very sparse. Uh, George Michael has some really good vocals on it. And Ann Wilson shines on this one. She also does her own sparse arrangement, keeps it very delicate. And vocally, she's right there. Uh, I thought she did a really good version of it. All right, so the final song on this album is Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. And uh, this was a great one from the late 70s. Always did love the song. It's got a lot of character to it. And I think it's one of these, just kind of leave it alone. Kind of like Hotel California. You're never going to reach the original. Uh, I've never heard a cover of this song that I liked. Uh, the Foo Fighters did a cover of it. And I thought it was too heavy-handed. It just, it just always loses these great nuances. Like Jerry Rafferty's vocal in itself. I just love the texture in his voice. The saxophone solo, the guitar solo, these are all things that make that song what it is. And whenever somebody covers it, they usually take those things out to try to put their own stamp, and that's where they lose. And uh, Anne's version of it is just, it's just ho-hum. It's really nothing special. I would always go back to Baker Street and listen to the original version for sure. So, you know, there you go. Out of these 10 songs, I like four of them. I think four of them are good. So there's six songs here that I don't think are really worth listening to. So I can't recommend this album. Uh, if you're a fan of Anne's, of course, you're going to go listen to this album anyway. But I really, for the most part, think it falls short. Uh, as I said, Anne does a great job on some of the more ballad songs, some of the songs that are more slower, lower key. She fits right in and does a really good job bringing out these nuances, but, you know, trying to tackle, you know, industrial stuff like I'm Afraid of Americans or stuff like, uh, you know, Life in the Fast Lane, which is a classic rock staple or Baker Street, just really going out on a limb. And it just does not work for me. Uh, Politician by Cream, you know, that's that's just got such a great blues vibe. Eric Clapton's guitar solo. That's all lost here. And um I get it. She's paying tribute. She's putting her own stamp on it. She's not trying to do better than the originals. I get that. But I'm just letting you know what I think about it. You know, what I think about how these songs have turned out. And uh, one thing I will say, though, is that Ann Wilson at her age, I think she's like 68 or something. She still has a tremendous voice. She can sing amazingly well. Like I said, I saw her just a couple of years ago with Heart. And uh, they were a real pleasure. She sounded great. So um, hopefully Anne can rejoin Nancy 
and uh, and get Hart back on the road. That would be really great. Would love to go see him again. Uh, so let me know what you think about this album. I'm going to put some uh, clips down below in the description so you can check out some songs from this album. Want to know what you think about this album, Immortal, from Ann Wilson. Comment below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button too, and I'll be back soon with another video.